Hello everyone, my name is Vladimir Losev and I am a head of crowdsourcing tool development group at Taloka. Taloka is a crowdsourcing platform and recently we have uh, open source a Python library for interacting with our platform. During the process of development of this library, we have encountered several problems regarding static code analysis tools. In this talk, I would like to share with you our experience, talk a bit about the problems we have encountered and how we solved them. So let's start with IDE hinting. Say you want to implement a package that is called Sleepy. And in this package, you want to implement a function that is called Sleep4. The difference between the Sleep4 function we want to implement and the standard library Sleep function is that our function additionally accepts a time unit argument that assess our function for how long we want it to sleep. So we would be able to sleep for one month, three weeks, two days, and so on and so forth. Uh, if we try to use the sleep for function in our code, we would see that IDE helps us with hints. It shows us the signature of the function, it autocompletes the arguments, and if we pass an argument that shouldn't be there, it highlights it and says that it shouldn't. Actually, I would demonstrate everything on my PyCharm, but the situation is pretty much the same in every other IDE too. So far, so good. But let's write a simple decorator and see what happens. Say we want to lock every function call and we implement a decorator that is called lock function call. Typically, one would implement such decorator as follows. We create a wrapper function, and inside that function, we write a message to our logging module every time before calling the original function, and every time the function has completed, we also write a message to our logging. Now, we configure our logging and call the function. We see that uh, our function actually uh, write something in our logging, and we can see that our function that was meant to sleep for three seconds actually sleeps for three seconds. But now let's have a look at what happened to our IDE hints. Now, after we decorated our function with log function call, we can no longer see the signature. We can no longer see the names of our arguments. We have no auto completion, and we can accidentally pass an unexpected argument and IDE wouldn't say a thing. So we would find the problem only during the runtime. Everything is gone somewhere. So let's try to think about where everything is gone. Let's have a look at our log function call. One could see that we uh, implemented a wrapper function that actually substitutes the original function. And that wrapper function accepts everything. It accepts arcs and quarks, which results in actually accepting every possible argument uh, combination ever. So maybe IDE is not wrong that it does not show us any syntax highlighting, any hints. But actually, no. Signature is still there. We can import an inspect module, and from the inspect module, we can use the signature function. And if we print the signature of our decorated function sleep4, we can see that the valid signature is still there. But our IDE just doesn't pick it. So what went wrong? Actually, the problem here is that even though we have this information at runtime, IDE doesn't have the access to this information. The reason is that IDE uses static code analysis instead of uh, introspecting the real-time objects. IDE does not want to run our code. Uh, there are plenty of reasons why it doesn't want to do that. There are several that I came up with. Um, they count side effects, so your code can create or delete something, uh, for example, files, or it can format file system due to runtime. Code may not be runnable in terms of it can raise some exceptions and be wrong. And um, the code might not be syntactically correct. That means that when you are trying to write your code, you have 
written the half of the name of your variable, IDE should still produce some hints, but the code is not syntactically correct and may not be run at all. So IDE is afraid to run our code and instead of introspecting real-time objects, it uh, resolves to static code analysis. And static code analysis is a tremendously hard job it is really difficult to analyze the code without actually running it. And in our case, IE could not understand that after applying our decorator, we would get uh, the function with the same signature. So what can we do? Generally, it's a good idea to provide our static code analysis tools with as much information as possible. So in our case, we can modify the original code like this. We can add type var t that indicates that log function call accepts uh, an argument of the same type as the return value. And let's have a look what effect this uh, takes on our IDE. For some reason, signature is still not there. But if we try to start typing the name of an argument, we can see that IDE autocompletes the name. It not only autocompletes the name, but it has a little pop-up that contains uh, all the signature for some reason. If we try to add an argument that is unexpected, the IDE does not highlight the argument. But we can see that uh, actually the information is still there, and I guess that's a little bug in my PyCharm that can easily be fixed in future. Uh, the main thing that we want to get from this is that adding proper type hinting helps IDE to get that information. And if uh, IDE or other static code analysis tools are sophisticated enough, they would be able to use this information in a useful way. This was a simple decorator. But as we can see, even such a simple decorator can confuse our IDE. We were able to fix this with type hinting, but in real life, we usually implement something more difficult, more complicated and sophisticated. And in this cases, we might not be able to uh, implement uh, type hinting that would help IDE to understand what happens. So let's write a little more advanced decorator. Say our users came up with feedback that they really like our sleep for function, but they do not want to uh, every time import time unit. They want to be able to use strings as well, string literals. So what we do is we implement an autoenum decorator. The main purpose of this autoenum decorator would be to take the function, analyze the arguments we pass to the function and try to um, cast all the arguments that are meant to be enums to the enum type. We would write the auto enum decorator like this. This is quite a lot of code, so let's go through this. First of all, we get the original signature of the function. Then we define a wrapper function, and the first thing that we do in the wrapper function is we try to bind the past arguments to the original ones so that we would be able to uh, see the names of the arguments that were passed. Next, we traverse the past arguments, and if the argument was meant to be a class that was inherited from an enum, and for some reason we passed a value that is not a enum value, we try to cast the past value to the enum type. Next, there is a piece of code that preserves the signature. So what we do here is we generate a new signature uh, that substitutes every enum value with a union of the original enum class and a set of literal values. So for our case, we want our enum to be substituted by a union of the original enum and string literals such as minutes, seconds, week, day, and whatever values were there in the original enum. And next, we assign the newly generated signature to the Dunder signature method, which preserves the signature information for future use at runtime and introspection. After applying such an autoenum, 
we can see that our IDE thinks that unit, that is a string, is an argument that for some reason shouldn't be passed. So this is an incorrect argument in terms of IDE. But if we run the code, it actually runs. And if we print the original signature, we can see that the signature is there, it is valid, and it contains the union of both string literals and uh, original enum. So what can we do in such case? So as you can see, this code is pretty much complicated and there is no way to come up with type hints that would help the static code analysis tools to introspect our code. So what we came up is with is stop files. Stop files are introduced in PEP 484 and they are special files that static code analysis tools should use instead of the original files in order to get uh, typing information from. Uh, originally, the purpose of these stop files was to bring type hinting experience to extension modules that are modules that were implemented not in Python, for example, in C, but we still would like to uh, use the type hints for these modules. So one would put a stop file near the module that was implemented in C, and static code analysis tools should pick the uh, information about the functions and type hints from that file. Third party models that were not yet supported by type hints. Um, the interesting part is two, three compatible modules. So um, in the day, you might want it to write uh, module that was Python 3 and Python 2 compatible. But if you wanted to bring type hints into your code, uh, that was a syntactically incorrect construction in Python 2. So you could not use type hints in the source code of your 2 3 compatible file. So you had to use stop files and put them somewhere near your module. And there are some people that use um, annotations not for type hinting, but for some other purposes. And even those people want uh, type hints and stop files are also useful for them. Um, what we want to use stop files for is we want to create files with already resolved signatures that static code analysis tools would pick easily instead of trying to resolve all the decorators, meta classes, and whatever there is in your code. So what should we add to our stop files? Well, in our experience, we should put all public member definitions, the annotations, the doc strings, uh, final function signatures after resolving all the decorators, constants, if you can do this, if you can't or you do not want to write the constants, you can use just three dots. And all the necessary imports in order for the stop file to be a syntactically correct Python file. What can be omitted? You can omit private members, uh, all the decorators, and the function implementations could also be omitted. You can use pass, three dots, or just doc string instead of the body of your function. In our case, we would write a stop file that would look something like this. So we want our sleep for function to have the following signature. So we just define a function that has the signature that we expect. We do not implement the body. We put three dots there and we add everything that is required for the stop file to be a syntactically correct Python file. So we add a time unit because it is used in the annotations. We import uh, int enum because it was required to um, inherit time unit from it. And we import typing literal and union again for the annotations. As you can see, our stop file has an extension PYI and is called the same as the module we want uh, the stop file to affect. So this is the convention and every time you want to create a stop file, you should call it the same as 
the module, but add an extension PYI to it. We also have PEP 561 that uh, asks us to add a marker file that is called PyTyped in order for the static code analysis tools to understand that they have to search for the stuff files. So we do just that. We create a, an empty PyTyped file and let's see what happens. So we can see that after adding stop files, the signature starts to pop up. If we start typing the argument names, they also are auto-completed. And in case we pass an argument that shouldn't be there, it is also highlighted. So as we can see, everything is fixed. Also, if we pass the string argument instead of the original enum argument, we can see that IDE does not say a word about this. That's because our signature that we created actually contains uh, a literal minute as a valid input. We can run the code, we can see that everything works. So it seems like we have fixed the problem, but actually we created ourselves another one. Usually developers use decorators, meta classes, uh, code generation and such things in order to eliminate boilerplate. But after adding stop files, we now have to maintain the burden of uh, creating the stop files and supporting the stop files. So if you want to uh, change your code, you will have to manually go to the stop files and change the stop files accordingly. The problem here is that if you forget to do this, or if you create an inconsistent stop file, you would not be able to uh, see the problem for quite a long time. So what we came up with in Taloka is automatic generation of such stop files. So what do we suggest? The IDE and other static code analysis tools are afraid to run our code, but we might not be afraid to do that. So if we are sure that our module does not have uh, side effects, we can import the module as a runtime object and then introspect the runtime object of the module in order to recreate the stop files. If one wanted to implement such approach, it would look something like this. One would have to implement the load module file from file this is a function that takes the name of a module and a path to the source code and tries to import the source code as a module that was named name. Next, we would implement the generate stop content uh, function. And in this function, for simplicity, we would do the following. First of all, we would uh, look at every member of the runtime module object and try to create only functions in our stop file. So we look at every member and if the member is a function and a member was defined in that module, there might be functions that were imported from other mo modules. Uh, we do not want to write them down to our stop files. We only want the functions that were defined in the module. If both those, those conditions pass, we then uh, creates uh, the definition for the function. We simply write def, the name of the member, and then we write the signature of the function. We already know that the value is a function. Then we break the line and put an empty body. In the main function, we combine those two functions. We accept the name and path and uh, load the module, pass it to the second function and write the results of the second function into the corresponding stop file. And in this piece of code, we just run everything on our sleepy module. So let's have a look at the results. We have created a stop file that contains a sleep for function. And the definition of that sleep for function is a really long line. So let's refactor this and have a look at what we have created. Uh, as we can see, we created something that is not syntactically correct because the signature of uh, a function produced a wrong default value. 
uh, actually the value is correct, but is not syntactically correct. We have to get rid of the braces uh, surrounding the time unit second. We did not import everything that was required for the file to be syntactically correct. So we did not import union, we did not import literal from the typing module. And we have not defined the time unit class. And this is also required in order for this code to be syntactically correct. So as we can see, there are some problems that you would have to tackle if you would like to implement this approach. But uh, the approach is doable. We at Taloka did that. We implemented a tool that imports the module and recreates the stop file from the runtime information. The only constraint about our tool is that every file that we want to process has to contain a dunder all method. This is the constraint that might be um, removed in the future, but for now it was easier for us to rely on the presence of the dunder all attribute. So we add dunder all attribute to all our modules, and then we run our stub maker tool as simply as that. Let's have a look at what it produces. It produces the stop file that is syntactically correct. Uh, the difference between the file that we created manually and the file that was created automatically is that in automatically created module, we have a dunder all attribute, which is expected. Uh, it might be unexpected that we have a time unit doc string, but actually every time you inherit from an enum, the doc string and enumeration is added automatically. So it is actually there in the runtime uh, object of the class that was inherited from the enum, but we know this uh, from our tool. So this is not a commonly known fact. And the other difference is that the slip for function that was generated by our stub maker is a long line, but actually it is syntactically correct and is similar to what we have created manually. The other modules that contain decorators are quite boring. They contain only the definition of the function and an empty body for both autoenum and log function call. And now bonus. Our tool is not only helpful in terms of IDE support, but also can be used with MyPy. So IDE is not the only tool that uses static code analysis. Uh, the other most commonly known tool to, that uses static code analysis is MyPy. And the problems that we encountered with the IDE support are similar to the problems you can encounter using MyPy. So if in your code you are using decorators, meta classes, or you compile code at runtime, or use something like named tuple but implement it uh, yourself, uh, you can benefit from creating the stub files with our tool. So this tool is open source now. You can find it uh, by the QR code uh, at the bottom. And if you'd like to contact me and ask anything in the future, you can uh, scan the QR code that is uh, at the top of the slide. And thank you for your attention. I would be glad to answer your questions.